Hi, I'm Jackie with Military Saves, where we are encouraging the entire military and veteran community to save money, reduce debt, and build wealth from taking our Military Saves Pledge. Thank you so much for joining us for today's Midday Money Chat. We're going to be talking about creative ways to save, which is very exciting. Now, before we get started, I want to remind you of a opportunity to win $500. It's through our Military Save Saver survey that closes this Friday, and anyone who has responded gets the opportunity to win $500. So I've got a link in our description. Definitely get started on your, uh, your savings for the summer with that, that wonderful prize. So let's go ahead and introduce our fabulous guest. This is Josh Elledge. Josh is a serial entrepreneur who builds the companies he needs most in the world. I love that. <laughs> Josh served in the U.S. Navy and earned a Bachelor's of Science degree in Family Sciences. Since then, he's become the founder and CEO of UpMyInfluence.com and the chief executive angel of SavingsAngel.com. Josh is a syndicated TV host, newspaper columnist, and the creator of three podcasts. The Savings Angel Show, Authority Confidential, and Thoughtful Entrepreneur. Josh has made more than 2,000 media appearances and now can add military saves to that list. <laughs> I, I, this, is, this, is the one, this is the one I'm most excited about today, for sure. This is the one. Well, Josh, thank you so much for your service and thank you for your time today. I cannot wait to hear your tips. Yeah, you bet, Jackie. Well, this is going to be fun. So listen, background-wise, you ought to know, like, I've been teaching on this for now 14 years, uh, you know, since back in the day. I was... Um, uh, late, late, late uh, 2006, early 2007. That was when I was, uh, I started off with my regular radio segment, all about all the different ways you can save money. So if, if you've ever wanted to have that friend who, who just seems to know how to get the deal, hook up or upgrade on anything in life, you're watching the right video because we're going to talk about some good stuff. Awesome. Well, thank you. I love your enthusiasm and I'm just as excited as you are. And I hope our audience tuning in gets some really great takeaways today. So before we jump into the money saving um, ideas, I would love to hear a little bit about your military service. If you can share. Mm -hmm. Yeah, straight out of high school. I remember I was in a journalism class in high school and a recruiter and a former high school grad, you know, who had joined the uh, military he was a Navy photographer at the time came in. He's like, man, I'm hanging out of helicopters and shooting all kinds of things. He's like, man, this sounds like so much fun. And so sure enough, we went down to the recruiter and, um, uh, I, I signed up, long story short, I became a journalist. It wasn't, it wasn't the first thing they tried to get me into, but I became a journalist and it was really great because I did uh, broadcast journalism, which it's always nice when your military experience, um, you know, gives you, I mean, we, almost anything you do, you're going to gain great discipline, leadership as a result, you know, management, that sort of thing. But it was also great that the technical skills that I were learning were going to be very applicable later in life. And, and really, all I learned was, you know, how to uh, get comfortable in front of audiences, in front of a camera, in front of a microphone. And I've certainly used that in my life. But yeah, so I was one year in school and boot camp and all that other stuff, uh, three years in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Uh, and then uh, my final year, I was out in the Aleutian Islands in uh, Adak, Alaska. And my last year, Jackie, I was actually a morning show DJ. That was my job in the military. So uh, it was really great. And I, I actually met, uh, if you're familiar with um, Good Morning Vietnam, Robin Williams. Um, so I actually met the, the real Adrian Cronauer uh, that the movie's based on. He spoke at our uh, DINFOS at our, uh, our journalism school. And uh, yeah, he was not as, he says, I'm not as funny as Robin Williams, but I'm definitely just as outspoken. And he, he absolutely was. Matter of fact, he, um, yeah, he was, he was surprisingly outspoken. I'm like, man, I can't believe they brought this guy in here. So, but yeah, he, but he, but he inspired me. Um, you know, about the, the sacred obligation that we have to serve audiences. Um, and that really lasted with me my whole life is, you know, always put the needs of your audience number one, you know, sales and anything else you want in life, man, that's a distant number two and beyond. Like if, if you treat audiences well, you, you, you'll do well in life. 
Oh, that's wonderful. Well, that seems like a perfect fit for you. I can't believe that that's what you did. Oh, I can't believe it because it's just, you're a natural fit for it. Well, it's thank you. Definitely. I wasn't at first. I was really bad <laughs> at the beginning. Like, you know, again, what you're looking at is like 2000 media. When, when you when you show up on TV like 700 times, you just, you, you know, you pick up the ropes. But no, go go and listen to some of my first podcasts. And, and I think you'll gain some sympathy and empathy for me. It's like, oh boy, this is not good. <laughs> I love that. And I, um, I had experience with the Armed Forces Network in Germany because some wow, of my friends yeah. were there as morning show DJs and I got to be a guest and I loved it. And my first segment, they asked a question about, oh, where do they find more information? I drew a complete blank. I couldn't even think of the website name. <laughs> and I thought, oh, so <laughs> you're yeah, right. Yeah, that'll you'll, happen. <laughs> yeah, you'll get comfortable. You'll start picking up skills. And before you know it, you'll just be in your element as you are today. So thank you for that. That is a yeah. really awesome story. Ooh, so I know our audience, they're going to get something from this and some great value from you. So I would love to hear um, a little bit about how you even got started with this. Have you always been a saver or a deal finder? Like, were you raised that way? Or was there yeah. some sort of event that caused you to suddenly say, hey, maybe I can spend less money or shop more wisely? Yeah, so I'm very grateful to my uh, mom in particular, you know, poor working class, um, Midwest family, um, definitely, you know, valued, you know, being able to save money. And, you know, particularly where it wasn't that difficult to do it. It's like, well, look, if I just do A instead of B, I'll, I'll save myself, you know, $7, like that $7 is nothing to get excited about. But see, it's the cumulative impact of being uh, aware of, of how you spend your money, always asking for discounts, always asking for coupons, always asking for upgrades, always looking for opportunities to um, save you and your family money. I mean, these are just good principles to do. And you don't have to become miserly. You don't have to become, you know, this desperate blah, blah, blah. Like it, it, if you just say, no, 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 it's really simple. It's like, for example, when we shop online and you're getting ready to check out and it has a coupon code block, right? A little box. What do you do? Well, hopefully you do a search and you see if there's a coupon code that works or you use a browser extension that will automatically do that, all right? Uh, why? Because we like saving money. Even if it's only 10%, cool, I'll take it, right? Um, asking for a military discount, which by the way, um, you know, we could talk about that. I, I don't wanna get too distracted on that, but you know, in terms of like military discount programs, um, but um, you know, those, well, let me just say, I'll take just a little pause because I want to mention this. Um, I have, um, you know, I've interviewed people that have done consulting for, you know, large enterprise level companies. Um, and, you know, they've helped construct military discount programs. I want you to know that if you are listening or watching this video, these companies, hotels, retailers, restaurants, et cetera, they want you to take advantage of those programs. If you do not take advantage of those programs, then they deem those programs to be not successful. And then they do away with them. So um, so just, you know, again, friend to friend, veteran to veteran, if you ever see where there's an opportunity, please don't, I, look, don't, don't be embarrassed, don't blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like, I, I get it. Like we're, you know, a lot of us, you know, with that military background, we're fairly self-sufficient, right? We, we, but, but just know that um, you're, you're actually helping a program who maybe other people really do need that discount. So you're helping ensure that that program sticks around so that other veterans and families can take advantage of the discount. I just want to throw that little, I want to throw that little plug in there. Um, Cause like I said, I've, I've talked with people on the inside uh, when it comes to those programs and they definitely want vets and, and other folks to take advantage of that. Okay. Background. Yes. So, many so people are afraid to ask what's the worst. I that? know. Yeah. yeah. Then you move yeah. on. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Really, you know, because usually, and, and Jackie, I'll just say this too, because, you know, philosophically, I, I want you to understand that when you're asking a cashier, it's like, they, they don't have any military discounts here, do they, right? You're not asking the man, right? You're just asking someone like you. Like, you know, they want to save money just like you want to save money, right? And so um, it does not hurt to ask. Because um, a lot of times, even if they don't have an official like military discount, they have a discretionary 10% discount that they can give for whatever the circumstance, right? A lot of times employees will be empowered to do that. So, um, so again, 
if you don't ask, if, ask, because if you don't ask, you won't get it. But if you do ask, you might get it. You might not. But <laughs> again, it doesn't, and you don't, and when you ask, you don't have to ask an energy of, you know, again, like desperation or whatever, just be super friendly and extol your appreciation, right? Just, you know, t- you know, that person that offered that to you is like, I, I, I'm always like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I really, you know, I'm always looking to save just a little bit, of, you know, saving a little bit of money for my family. And they're like, yeah, I get it. Right. So we're all friends here. We're all friends here. This will get in. Don't let me forget this when we talk about like calling customer service. Cause I'll, I'm going to talk all about that too. Cause that's, that's definitely a trick. Um, so, but it was, um, it was, uh, I was working in kind of like online marketing and web development. Uh, and my income was kind of doing this a lot. I had good months and I had bad months and it was really stressful. It was really frustrating. And I needed to get really defensive with how I was spending my family's money. And I remember, um, it was, a. Uh, you know, Dave Ramsey back in the day. And, uh, you know, was going through his financial peace university, um, not necessarily endorsing it, but uh, that, you know, for me back in 2006, that's, this was going through. Uh, and he got to the part when he's talking about designing a spending plan. And so I'm like thinking, okay, cool. How much do we spend at the grocery store? And I'm like adding everything up. I'm like, Hmm, I don't know. Let's see. It's my wife and I, we had two kids at the time, third on the way. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we probably spend maybe what, three, $400. I asked my wife and she's like, she laughs at me. It's like, are you kidding? We spend like eight, $900 to feed our family. And I was like, if I were doing, if I were drinking coffee, I would have done one of those spit takes. Right. Cause I'm like, that is a lot of money. Eight nine hundred dollars every single month. I'm like, there's got to be a way that you can save money. And so I, um, Jackie, I started reading every book I could on this subject because I'd I'd heard that there are some people that are able to successfully cut their grocery bill in half. And so I started reading all the books I could on it. There really weren't there wasn't a lot of great information online at the time, but I I follow, follow, found what I could. And I thought, hmm, when it comes to cutting your grocery bill in half, listen, there's two ways you can do it. One, and this works, do you, I don't even remember these old clickbait ads, like, you know, far, or, uh, uh, grocery stores hate this one man's trick, right? And what he does, it, and um, all he's doing is like, he's growing his own food is that in a garden. Like, wow. Uh, but that is one way. You can do that. You can grow a lot of food and you will save a lot of money. You could raise chickens, goats, whatever. And that is a possibility. Uh, knowing my li- my personality, it was not a good option for me. And so the only other option you have, instead of, well, you don't want to stop eating. You're not going to stop eating, right? Your kid's going to keep needing diapers, formula, you know, all that other stuff. So you got to keep buying this stuff. But here's what you do. You have to take advantage of every discount that is available to you. And ideally, you want to start stacking discounts because if you can do that, now you can take what was a $4.50 box of Cheerios and you can now, if you get, let's say, a BOGO, so now you're two twenty-five, dollars and then maybe you get $1.25 in coupons, now you're at a dollar for that box of cereal, right? As opposed to $4.50. Now, you might hear me talk about that and say, whoopee, $3.50 saved. Okay, <laughs> listen, <laughs> smart guy. Well, I'm not talking about just that one box of cereal. You're going to do that exact same thing for everything that you put in your cart. So if you put 20 items in your cart and you save an average of $3 a piece on those items, on average, some more, some less, right? Now we're talking $60 and this is only one shopping trip. So multiply that times, you know, five shopping trips. Now we're talking $300. Do I have your attention yet? Because a $300 a month pay raise, Jackie, I will take that. Like I can do something with that. I uh, three hundred dollars. I can apply that toward paying off a credit card bill. I can do that. Maybe take my wife out for a really wonderful dinner once a month, and still have you know a couple hundred dollars left over to do whatever. Um, like I don't care about retailer and manufacturer profits. That's not where I want to spend my extra money. I don't care about that. What I do care about is the stuff that matters more to my lifestyle you know, getting rid of scary debt, of course, um, and then just being able to have a little bit of extra cushion so I don't have to stress about things like a car 
X, a fender bender or some flat tire or something like that, right? I, I want to make sure that I've got that cushion set aside so that doesn't cause a lot of um, trauma in the family or, you know, hurt, you know, or, or cause stress to my relationships in the family. I don't want to have to deal with that. So that's why I take advantage of coupons at the grocery store. And I'll tell you, like, we'll get into all the other stuff, Jackie, but I got to tell you that grocery saving money at the grocery store is the easiest way I know to give yourself a two to $400 a month pay raise. It is so easy because almost everybody is shopping all wrong. It's you're, you're going, you're, you're, and this is what the average person does. And by the way, I, I feel like you pulled my string and now I'm if you want to interrupt me or what, Jack, you feel yeah, free, I'll forgive me. <laughs> um, but here's the thing, right? So everybody usually prides themselves on being a smart shopper, but you're shopping like everybody else and everybody else is spending eight, 800 to a thousand dollars at the grocery store alone, not including count eating out, which we haven't even talked about yet. That's really expensive. Okay. But just at the grocery store, okay. What you want to get away from is buying the things that you need, need based shopping is the most expensive way to feed your family. What am I talking about? You look in the pantry. Oh, shoot. We're out of Triscuits. Well, the family loves Triscuits, so better go buy them, right? Kids are complaining. There's no Triscuits left, right? So what do you do? You go to the store and you're like, oh, man, Triscuits aren't on sale. Oh, well, I guess I'll buy the great value woven wheats. <laughs> They're not as good. They're crappy. But you buy them anyway. Why? Because you want to save money. And so rather than $4, now you spent $3. But here's the thing, okay? And so now we're going a lesser of all evils approach to shopping, okay? That's good, right? It's a little bit better than buying all brand name stuff. But that's this is what everybody does. And so going to Aldi, going to Walmart, going to a big warehouse club store. That's psychologically consumers think that they're being proactive. They're not because again, that's what everybody does. The, the absolute best way, the, the best price possible is to go to a grocery store that does, you don't want to go to like a, an always kind of low price. You want to go to a store that does high, low pricing, right? So in the Southeast here, we got Publix. Publix yeah. is a great example of this. Publix every week has tons of BOGOs. Okay, so right off the bat, we are getting groceries and products at 50% off. Usually, almost all BOGOs have a 0% or become a loss leader for Publix. They, they lose money on the BOGOs uh, so that they can make money with all the other stuff that you buy, right? But we're not going to do that. We're only going to focus on the absolute best deals. So BOGOs are great, but you also want to stack coupons. The Publix app, for example, and all your other grocery stores, almost all of them have an app of some sort where you can stack additional coupons automatically. In addition to that, you could search the internet. You could search coupon directories. You can even use the paper coupons that come out in the Sunday paper. You can do it. Why? Because you make a lot of money doing it. Your couponing time, you will almost always save $30 to $40 an hour for that activity. So... You want a little part-time job, $30, $40 an hour? It's not going to take more than a couple of hours a week, max. I mean, max. So, you know, now we do that. We save extra money as a result of that. But not only do I want to make sure that you're stacking discounts, because again, a sale by itself is good. A sale plus a coupon and any other savings available, like, you know, one of those promotions where you buy, you know, $50 worth of frozen food and you get like a $10 gift card or something like that. Like all that stuff counts, right? But it, it does require a little bit of thought. You have to do your planning at home. Don't do all of your planning at the store because now you're in an environment where you're hoping to not have to spend all day there. From your computer, you have much more objective information. So that's where I want you to do all your planning. Figure out where the coupons are, where the discounts are. Um, also, um, don't go to just one store. So you might decide uh, because, again, um, you, you, you know, if you still need milk and milk is four dollars and some cents at Publix and meanwhile it's two dollars at CVS which happens by the way um you know it makes sense if you go there for you know and the savings maybe means an extra you know five to eight dollars or more 
um, then yeah, it might make sense to, you know, go down the road a little bit and head over to the CVS to pick up the other eyes. So what we want to do is we want to cherry pick all the lost leaders. We want to cherry pick the only the best deals at each store and maybe make a plan to, um, you know, go to an extra store or two from time to time. And the reason why, not that I want you driving all over town, but when it makes sense mathematically, I want you to do that. So again, let me, let me just make sure you remember the fundamentals here. Number one, stop buying what you need. Need-based shopping is the most expensive way to buy. What should you be buying? Only the best deals, right? So what that means is if you have to put without, so the Triscuits example, for example, like you, you bought the $3 generic box, right? Well, what you should have done is bought it two weeks ago when you could have got it for $1.10 a box because you had the coupon and the BOGO, right? But that's, um, and when, and that gets to now principle number two, because you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, I don't get it, Josh. If I need cheese, I'm going to get cheese. No, what you need to do is you need to buy cheese when you can get it for 60, 70% off. And then you, principle number two, you stock up. You buy what you can comfortably use within a reasonable amount of time. Okay, this is going to be different for everybody. And we could talk about food waste and all that stuff a little bit later, because I've got some thoughts on that, right? But you want to start building a pantry. You want to start filling a freezer, right? With things that you got at bargain basement prices, because you don't want to shop at the store. When you need something, you want to shop from your pantry when you need something and you got it 60, 70% off. That's how this whole thing works. And you have to be committed to this. And so what this means is, you know, it's like, I remember this growing up. It's like, we want something. It wasn't on sale. Mom said, no. <laughs> and that's okay. Guess what? I, I don't mean to say you can never have it. Almost everything goes on sale at a store like a Publix or whatever, or Kroger or whatever it is in your neck of the woods, right? It Almost everything goes on sale every 13 weeks. So it's not on sale this week, just wait a week, Wait, maybe wait a couple of weeks. And then when you get that 50% off sale or better, stock up, baby. Awesome advice. And I can add, because as a military spouse in Germany, we used to get to uh, use coupons for six months past their expiration date at the commissary. That's right. Really helped because then we could really plan. We didn't buy a lot of things thinking, oh, shoot, this expires Friday. I knew I had six months and there were, there was a nonprofit organization called Coops for Troops and they yep. would mail, like volunteers would cut coupons and mail boxes. And then my friends and I would just pass them around because someone needed dog food, someone needed diapers, you know, we all had different needs and that really worked out well. But totally. Other, Listen, the manufacturers are willing to subsidize you feeding your family. In fact, Savings Angel, we facilitated in that program for many years and we donated well more than $5 million worth of coupons. Oh, maybe um, I used some of your coupons. I probably, yeah. We had some bases that we had sponsored. I can't remember which ones they were now, but I remember we had a couple of volunteers that, uh, you know, and then we helped fund some of that as well personally, but it was wonderful yeah, um, it was that we were able to, yeah, yeah. Get, get, get some more use out of those discounts. Right. And my other tip as a military spouse is there, you've been there, the commissary, you're in line forever. I was there with kids. And by the time I got home and unloaded, I was like, well, now I just want to order a pizza. Yes. Right. <laughs> so my tip is to buy what you like, use what you have just bought, use what you have. I think everybody's guilty of doing a massive shopping trip and then thinking I'm not cooking. I'm not messing up the kitchen, um, but that does cost you. So, <laughs> yeah, for sure. So a lot of that same principle rolls into vacation and, you know, how we spend money on food on vacation. Um, but, but so the thing is, is you want to make your decisions when you're in the right frame of mind, when you make your decisions, when you're exhausted and burnt out or like, we we're on vacation, let's just spend money that we don't have, right? You don't want to do that because that's what you will want to do when you make your decision in the moment. You have to make your decisions when you're in a relaxed, comfortable state of mind. This is why grocery stores put 
items in the back of the store that you need. The eggs and the milk are always in the back because they want you going past everything, seeing that. And also what grocery chains know is every minute that they can keep you in the store, they make, oh gosh, I, I don't remember the exact number, but I think it was like anywhere somewhere like three to $7 per hour or per minute uh, that you spend in the store is generally how much you're going to spend put in the cart. So the goal, their goal is to keep you in the store as long as possible. Your goal is to go in with a list of exact Exactly what you want and need and don't deviate from the list when the kids say blah 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 because the retailers put it at kids eye level that's all intentional everything you see in the grocery store is scientifically designed to get you to spend more money at, when you go to a warehouse club, it is psychologically designed to lead you to believe that you are saving far more money than you realize. You're not. You're not. You're not saving a whole lot of money to warehouse clubs. Warehouse clubs per unit are actually quite expensive. But because you're, oh my gosh, an open ceiling! Wow, there's a forklift that just drove by me. I must be in a wholesale warehouse. Nope you're in a retailer. It's just designed like a warehouse to lead you to believe. And the bo the, the boxes and everything is, a you know, these unstandard sizes. So we kind of like, oh, is this a good deal? I, man, but look at how many we're getting, right? And then they, you know, again, we talk about food spoilage. Um, no, it's, so we've, we've done a lot of work comparing per unit pricing at warehouse clubs. There are a few bright spots. By and large, warehouse clubs are a bad deal, believe it or not. No, well, and I would, I personally would rather be spending the money, um, not on groceries, but on vacation. I'd rather have that extra money. And then yeah. and you were just sort of segueing into vacations. And since it's summer, let's go ahead and jump into that if you're ready to give some vacation tips. Yeah, totally. Um, so again, um, planning is your friend, um, buying everything in advance, looking for discount codes and coupon codes and promo codes are exceptionally valuable. Now, since we're recording this in 2021, I need to let you know that there are a few weird things that have been taken, that have happened. I don't know if you've been paying attention the past year and a half, but we had this whole pandemic that, you know, kind of blew up the world there. Well, there are some impacts to certain sectors. And one of them is travel and hospitality. They're looking to get their money back. Now, I will tell you, there are a couple things like airplanes. The prices are really good right now on flights. The prices on Rental cars, however, are ridiculous. I've like, heard about this, like Hawaii's insane. Oh, no, 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 no. Forget it. Forget it. Okay, so here's what you got to do instead. All right. So first off, what's going on? All right. So the rental car companies weren't renting any cars last year, so they liquidated their fleets. <laughs> Guess what? Now we need those cars and the rental car cars don't, the companies don't have them. And so the price... Uh, is uh, in some cases four to five times what it was previously. Like my wife and I, um, my wife is going to be speaking at a conference in Salt Lake City in August, I want to say, um, booked our flight, got a great deal on the flight. But then they're like, hey, do you want to rent a car? Four days, one thousand dollars i'm like nope i think for a thousand dollars i can uber about yeah, like anywhere else i need to get to shoot for a thousand dollars man we could uber from salt lake to vegas pretty easily i would think so um okay so here's a website that, that you want to take a look at first off if you're a member of usaa i think they have a great program for discounts on travels and stuff so always check them out because especially i'll tell you uh it was a few years ago oh man did we get a great deal on a cruise uh, that, um, and again, boy, that's a whole nother thing we could talk about. Like, there's like so many, so many rabbit holes I could get go down um, uh, in terms of like, you know, kind of last minute deals or whatever. Anyway, um, back on the, okay, so rental car, I want you to look up a website called Turo, if you're not using that T-U-R-O, and what this, it's kind of like an Airbnb for rental cars. So you get to rent from normal people. So what was a thousand dollars, I am now paying $110. <laughs> Because Yeah, exactly. Now, had I not known that or had I not taken the time to research that, okay, and I'm like, shoot, I got to have a car. Oh, well, guess I just got to go ahead and because, and, and I see that I live in Orlando. And I see that so often when people are going on vacation, they're like, well, we're on vacation. Nah, man, that's, that's dumb. Don't do that. Please, 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 please. I want you, I want you to enjoy a 
fabulous vacation, but I want you to get maximum value for your dollars. So in other words, if you want to go out and snorkel with your family on the, you know, I want you to find that maybe in a Groupon so that you can have that amazing experience rather than just like, no kids, you know, go ahead and do those things. But again, um, you know, be defensive as you're doing all the planning. So you can have these amazing, you know, experiences that you can remember for the rest of your life. That's what I'm all about. I think that's my favorite term that you've used. I've only heard defensive before, like defensive driving, you know, and you're keeping yeah. yourself, your family, your vehicle safe, but this defensive finances, you're keeping your family's money safe. And I think that is just a really clever way uh, to describe that all you're doing is putting a little time and thought in when the mood is right, as you said, mm. not when you're hungry or tired or just in this whatever goes mood. And that's yeah. like the key. One thing I... Jackie, I, I appreciate this so much. And, and again, I hopefully we're, we're helping impact some lives here. Um, there, there's one more thing on travel and tourism I didn't want to forget. So I want to hope you, I, I apologize if it felt like I was interrupting you. I just want to make sure before we didn't, you know, move on to like car insurance or something like that, right? That I didn't, uh, I didn't forget. This. And this is, um, I am about to forever change your life because I'm about to teach you something that you will always do and you will always remember me because of what I'm about to teach you. And that's how to always get a major upgrade uh, at a hotel for the rest of your life. And I'm gonna give you the secret formula for how to do this. All right, you ready? This, right. And you might want to take some notes on this uh, because, <laughs> it, yeah, this is this is that good. And, and I have, I'll just start by saying, I have gone from, you know, booking a like a $50 some room to getting an upgrade to like a presidential, like $600 a night suite. Um, I have gotten, I mean, I, I, I never not get the upgrade unless there's no upgrades to be gotten. That's the only time I don't get an upgrade is if there's, well, all the rooms are the same here. That's it, that's it. And in, in which case, like at least I'm gonna get a top floor room or something like that. But okay, so here's how we do this. All right, this is, again, I'm, I'm excited to, to, to dispense this knowledge. Okay, so first off, you under, need to understand that the best way for you to get a great deal to hotel, um, if you know someone who works at the hotel, you can get hookups, okay? If that's not available to you, I, I do want you to know that those hookups are good because usually friends and family deals, like you could stay at almost any hotel and it's like 20 to $40. Um, it is a really good deal if you know somebody. Um, just like if you know someone who works at Disney World, they get free, they get X number of free tickets a year that you know sometimes they can share with you. So it's, yeah, it's nice to know someone on the inside, but let's assume you don't have that. Here's the next best thing you could do. Um, you want to be able to book at a hotel that has lots of different room categories, right? So again, this isn't really going to work if you're staying at a stay a lodge, you know, you know, just, you know, $59 a night on the side of the highway. This isn't really going to work. There's, there's nothing to upgrade you into at that point. Okay. But let's say it's a downtown hotel. Um, you know, it's a nice, they have some really nice rooms there. Okay. This, this is the perfect environment for this. Okay. So what you do, is you get the best rate you possibly can, cheapest room, just get your night or nights there, right? And um, so recommend, you know, searching, um, using um, TripAdvisor. I recommend using Hotwire, Priceline, um, doing your research. Um, tri Tripwire, or, I'm sorry, Hotwire and Priceline don't always have the best deal. Man, Groupon used to have some really great deals. You could check them too. Um, but again, you just want to get a property. And by the way, it's really easy today uh, to figure out like on Priceline and Hotwire, what hotel you're going to get. Um, just just spend a little time, get on trip, uh, get on um, the other, what's, what, what's uh, the other, is it TripAdvisor? Trip Adv is that the one I'm thinking of? Oh, gosh, I'm not, I'm thinking of the website where, where it allows you to, um, you know, it really like a lot of good user reviews on what properties are really great. Um, yeah, so use use all of those tools. You're like, yep, it looks like it's gonna be this hotel. Cool, rate's great. It's cheaper than what I can find on these other websites. Go for it. Spend an extra 10 minutes and do this, right? You'll appreciate, you'll appreciate this later. Again, hotel that has different room classes. Okay, now you're booked. Then what I want you to do is I want you to immediately, well, not immediately, but just after you book, I want you to call the hotel. Hey, just made a third party booking, but I know that I'm not gonna get points for this, but because I'm a member of the hotel's frequent stay club and you have to 
join all the clubs, right? Because a lot of times they're going to use this as an excuse to hook you up. So join the uh, Hilton Honors or Marriott Rewards or whatever it is, right? Make sure you're on that uh, in advance. Um, then what I want you to do is I want you to call the hotel and you say, I want to make sure, even though I'm not going to get points for this, I want to make sure that my room is connected for uh, to my frequent stay club. And then they'll do that. Now, when you make the call, you can say, and by the way, um, you know, you sometimes you can ask for upgrades or whatever, just like you just simply say, just like, um, listen, this can be a special event. Is, is this a good room? I mean, you know, the property pretty well. And sometimes they'll upgrade you right then and there on the spot. But I, I wouldn't, you know, establish rapport with them. Be nice. Always be nice. Right. Um, that That's fundamental because no one likes hooking up people that aren't nice or no one likes hooking up the man. We like hooking up people that are like us. OK, so um, but mainly. You just want to make sure you get the connection. Then where the magic is usually always going to happen is when you show up into the hotel. Okay. I recommend making sure you have your kids with you. Like, look, you want to look like, you know, a family that's excited to be there, right? Um, if you've been driving a while, here's what I usually say. Now, first off, I also, um, I also know that there might be certain types of people. Like if you have a choice of like, which attendant to go to to check in you might know who you tend to have better rapport with and i would leverage that and that's all i'm going to say on that <laughs> but 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 you should you should be aware of your charm factor on certain people and use that to your advantage uh, so that's all i'm going to say there okay so then when you go up um you want to again the energy you want to share is appreciation if you just saw that someone was being hassled by a, a, an angry customer or whatever like that, empathize, man, I am so sorry you had to deal with that. And I do this all the time. Like, because man, when you're working in the service industry or travel industry or hospitality or retail, like, oh, it's so thankless sometimes. So so express appreciation to that person. Oh man, so sorry you had to deal with that. That If, that's, if that happened, right? But what I wanna do is I'm gonna say, oh my gosh, we're so excited. We're so happy to be here. Kids have been so great in the car. You know, give them an excuse to let them know that you are someone that is worthy of hooking up. Right, you know, in terms of the, uh, you know, an upgrade. So I say, listen, um, it's my, we're celebrating my, my kids got a really good report card. They really worked hard at this. They've been so good in the car. Um, my, um, my wife's been so good in the car. I, I want to reward her. I don't know, whatever, right? Uh, just you give them any excuse. And this is important that you give them an excuse because um, have you ever heard that, uh, that, that experiment where if you just go up to someone and say, excuse me, um, can I cut in line? They'll say no, uh, but if you say, excuse me, can I cut in line? And then you give them any excuse, more than often they will say yes. Um, excuse me, I've got bread in the car. Can I cut in line? Okay, it doesn't make any sense, but because you gave an excuse, they'll say they're more likely to say yes. So you want to give them a reason for what you're about to ask them, right? You're celebrating something. Um, you know, you're excited. You're happy to be here. Like you appreciate them. You know, they're your partner in this wonderful night stay at this hotel, right? They're, they're your um, hospitality partner, even though this is just, you know, so it's nice when people feel appreciated for the work that they do, right? So that's said, we get, we've already set up a reason. Then these are the words you're going to want to use. And you want to remember this now. Okay. So uh, again, be nice excuse, fundamental. Now you're going to say, um, listen, I'm not sure what your occupancy rate is. And I'm not sure if you've got the power and you'll see what I'm doing with my hands right now. I'm kind of like putting my hands up right now, but if you have any available upgrades, oh my gosh, that would be so great. A little extra space. You know, we've been cramped in the car all day. Uh, I would be so grateful. Okay, so what did I just say? Okay, first off, I used the term occupancy rate. Why did I say that? The reason I said that is because it's a little bit of an in insider term. Like normal guests don't ask or talk about that. But what that says is it's okay. I'm one of you. 
Like, you know, and so, um, and that's important because again, we always do nice things for people that are like us, like we identify with or whatever. So um, we want to, again, psychologically kind of be on their side of the desk a little bit, right? And so I don't know what your occupancy rate is. And then you put your hands up, right? Because you want to show them I'm kind of at your mercy. And, and this magical phrase, I don't know if you have the power or not. Okay, what did I just do right there? All right, so when somebody says, I'm not sure if you've got the power to do this, what do you wanna do? You wanna show them, oh yeah, I'm, I've got the power, right? Because they don't wanna let you know, I don't have any power to do that. Sometimes they can, and sometimes, they, because they don't, right? That happens once in a while. But usually there's some, like they might have to get a manager approval or something like that, and that happens. Um, but usually, no problem. So what you'll see, and I love this, right? You'll see this little reaction. And what I like to watch is watch their eyebrows. And so, because if they go like, you know, like it's kind of like subtle, like with one of their eyebrows kind of go up, you're like, oh yeah. And then all of a sudden you, like you just did, you just all of a sudden you start here, clickety, 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 clickety on the, on the keyboard. I'm like, got it, got it, got it. Right. And so again, just again, really nice, give an excuse, um, don't know what your occupancy rate is, and I'm not sure if you have the power, and then have a specific ask. If you want um, uh, the concierge level, that's one I, I frequently ask for when I'm business traveling, because I don't want to eat at a restaurant and stuff like that if it's just me. Um, so that's one I'll ask for. Um, you'll almost always get like something, at least like the top floor. I mean, that's well, all right. But a lot of times, um, if they have availability and like the room's going to go empty anyway. It doesn't really matter to me. So they will absolutely move you to a nicer room. Again, I like to ask for something specific, like a separate bedroom is almost always going to be an upgrade from the hotel room that, that I booked. And yeah, you'll, you'll get it all. I would say if they, if they can do it and if they have the ability to do it, you'll get it almost 80, 90% of the time. Oh, you heard it, folks. Creative ways to save with Josh Elledge. Military save, savings angels. <laughs> You're mm -hmm. in the right place. I love that. I have never been trained to do that. I have never heard that before. I even lived in Orlando. I had friends in hospitality. Yeah. And that just seems genius and very mm. doable. I can't wait to try that out and report there's, that. <laughs> there's only one city where the rules are different, and it's Vegas. In oh, Vegas, wow. like you're almost board. always going to get the upgrade, and it's the $20 trick. So when they ask for your driver's license and credit card, um, you put a few fold a $20 bill in there and you say, um, listen, I would be so grateful if you have any upgrades. I'm so happy, honored to tip the front front desk staff if you're a, if if you're cool with that. And they'll you it's like it's just it's like an in it's Vegas locals like know that trick and it works. And th that one, that was at the MGM Grand that, that, that I did it. And sure enough, I got a high roller suite. Those suites are nice too. Like uh -huh. that's <laughs> 20 bucks. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. awesome. Well, thank you, Josh. These are truly, truly innovative ways to save. So I'm loving this. Um, I know that not everybody's traveling yet. So a lot of us are still home, but there are ways to save at home. And it could be um, right now in the heat, ways to beat the heat or with your car. So what kind of tips do you have for kind of general everyday at home savings? Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm a big fan of, um, you know, if we're talking about like summer with kids are from home from school and stuff like that activities, look, it, it's really easy to spend a lot of money on activities and or eating out. And so again, what I'm a big fan of is block off an hour, right? And just say, you know what, I'm just going to go online and I'm going to research all the stuff to do. I'm going to ask on Facebook, what are the fun things to do, low, you know, low cost things to do with kids. And I want you to make a list. And then I want you to put that list where the kids can see it. And you've already vetted this stuff. It's all, you know, relatively cheap because what you don't want to do is like, oh, it's raining everyone's bored, I'm going out of my mind, I just wanna get out the door, right? And so, and then you end up doing something that that's, it's got a little bit of a budget buster, right? And so if you've planned, like for example, like let's say the movies, um, so, um, you know, for example, like if if the movies, local theaters, which are open now in most cities, um, they have like a, you know, a $1 movie on Tuesday morning, uh, you know, I've seen stuff like that, um, do that 
don't wait until Friday to go to see a first run movie uh, a film, you know, get that bug out of your system. Right. And so, but, but again, I like the idea of creating the biggest list you can always add to it, always be asking, but then your kids like now you can set up incentives. We say, listen, kids, if you clean your rooms, we're going to go pick strawberries, or blueberries, you know, whatever. Like I'm thinking like, you know, Michigan, I remember that's what my mom would do. We're going to go pick strawberries or whatever. And like, cool. And now, you know, you give incentive for the kids to do it. Um, and, and a deadline, I would also add. Um, yeah. So now you get, you know, kind of a two for the price of one. So it's kind of, again, it's the same principle of like, you know, when you just stroll into a store on black Friday, um, look, don't, don't feed into the hype and blah, blah, blah. Like if you didn't want it at home when you were in your, you know, rational brain, um, you being at the store, again, stores are designed to extract money out of shoppers, purses, wallets, and, and pockets, right? That's, that's what they're designed to do. And so I just want you to be much more objective about that um, before you do that. Perfect. And I love that about involving the kids because then they're excited about it. They feel like they're a part of it. You're not doing something where they're like, oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. 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 Um, um, you know, or you might double up. Right. And I'm a big fan of doubling up too. It's like, we have to do this. You're not going to want to go here, but you got to come with mom, you know, blah, blah, blah. We got to go do this. But if you're really good in the store, then you get X, right? And X might be something that's on the list that's kind of a treat and you're also gonna get a good deal on. Or again, you know, this afternoon, you know, uh, you know, if you earn, you know, five gold stars and you might actually even have like, you know, gold stars that you put like on the shopping cart or whatever. And like, you know, just like your teachers used to do, right? You don't wanna, you don't wanna red check marks. You want a gold star, you know, that sort of thing. And just, you know, visually give them incentive, you know, and it's amazing like gamifying stuff. It works for kids and it works for adults. <laughs> I love it. So we've got savings and parenting tips all wrapped in one. This is fantastic. Could you elaborate just a little bit more on gimmicks and marketing ploys that, that um, companies try to use to make you spend more? I know I've seen a few before, but I'd like to hear which ones you would specifically like to point out. So what, what are you talking about when who gets you to spend more? Like the companies that are trying to oh. maybe do it where they put things on display oh, or yes. they're trying to target you online. Oh, and gosh. You know, oh, buy three more of the same product, even though you're Yes, totally, yeah. totally. All right. Look, here's the deal. <laughs> and I want to talk about, um, ah, okay, there's so much more. Okay. By the way, if you like the stuff that I'm talking about, when you go to savingsangel.com, I have again, more than 10 years worth of blog articles. I, you just search any topic and you will find multiple articles on that subject. I've got nothing for sale. Just go and enjoy. It's all free. Um, I have podcasts. I've been, listen, I've been podcasting for eight years. You can find the Savings Angel show and just, again, search for show titles and notes and stuff like that because I've covered about everything. Let's go through a few things that they do at the grocery store since I know that one particularly well. Okay. Um, everything from the smells to the fact that the, the fruit is dewy, <laughs> uh, to, to the lighting, to uh, how they display things on end caps, or they put things in a tumbler, or cut carton is another technique that they'll do. It's all designed to get you to think something, right? It's, so for example, like when you go into the store, there's the smell of baked bread, it's designed to be, oh, I'm happy to be here, right? And so that's that's intentional, right? Um, and so um, what you want, you know, and you're greeted usually by either um, flowers, you know, or they have display of bouquets of flowers. And again, that's pleasing. It's, it's designed to get you to feel certain emotions. Um, or a lot of times you'll see a lot of tumblers that are just filled with product that's on sale right? Psychologically, what they are trying to get you to believe is everything in the store is, you know, it, it, this is your greatest day of shopping ever, basically, because it's all on sale. So, you know, when you see that, you're like, honey, go get a second car. We're going to save some money today, right? And that's kind of, again, that's design. So tumblers, you know, um, or a lot of times what they'll do is like, you'll see, it's called cut carton where they'll take and they'll cut the box, but they'll keep the product in the cardboard box. And it's designed to let you that, man, 
we're just blowing these things. I, we can't even keep them on the shelf. See this? We're even just putting them out here in boxes. Uh, that's because, and it's all designed to, to get you to think it's uh, that it's a much bigger sale than it is, right? Um, tumblers usually kind of associate that with clearance, right? So when something's in a tumbler, you're like, look, it's so messy here. They're just trying to get rid of it, right? Again, it's psychological. Um, the music, um, you know, like I said, the already the lighting, the positioning, um, you know, of where products are um, in the store. Um, the perimeter is usually the most profitable um, for the store. Usually the box goods and stuff have much lower profits. Um, and, um, you know, again, um, what, what you want to do is ask yourself um, before you buy a product, ask yourself, does this product ever go on sale? And if it does, can you wait a week or two? Because the next sales cycle, it might actually be on sale for 50% off. And I don't want you buying at full price if, if you can. So anyway, those are just a few things that I've, I've noticed. There's, there's a lot more. It's been a while since I, I used to do a whole class on supermarket psychology because I, I, I'd go like real deep into like, you know, things like there's there's some really interesting stuff about how the industry works, like um, slotting allowances and how um, grocery stores will often make more money from manufacturers paying for real estate in the store than they actually do from the profit margin from selling of the product itself. So in other words, because Coca-Cola wants to have that primo, primo end cap on you know 112 stores, they pay a premium to the grocery store in order to get that real estate. Um, and so the groceries, that's, that's part of where grocery stores make all their money. Most profit margins are very, very thin on most products in the grocery store. Um, there are some things that are super high profit margin that they hope you'll buy while you're in there, but um, you want to avoid those. <laughs> And I can vouch because I worked at a particular grocery store in high school and college. And right before the workers would come through um, for a lunch break, we would pull out the popcorn machine and start popping it. And you'd yeah. walk right in the store and it was like, mm, popcorn. Or in the fall, yeah. these cinnamon brooms by the front door. And it was like, yes, oh, yes, yeah. Like, you know, the holidays are coming. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's true. So I've been on that side. Um, one, one thing, Jackie, I want to mention that I, I, I just want to make sure I don't forget this because we only have a few minutes left is I want you to look up a website called Still tasty.com, or you can search on savings angel. We've done a lot of work around this. This is really important just because an expiration date hits on a product in your pantry does not mean it's bad. Do not throw it out necessarily. Please research what exp expiration dates have no bearing on food safety. Food safety is a completely separate um, measurement. Ex expiration dates are only meant for retail to communicate to retailers, hey, we as a manufacturer want you to get this item off your shelves and then negotiate on those dates as well. It's very arbitrary in most cases. So what you need to do is, again, like I had some juice boxes or whatever that were six months past due in the pantry. And I'm like, no, they're probably totally fine, right? And the way is you just got to do the smell test, the sight test or whatever. And that's really the best way to do it. Um, go learn about what expiration dates really mean. And, and they are not meant for consumers necessarily. You can use them to help make sure that you're rotating your products in, but don't waste food just because the date passed. That doesn't mean it's bad. Um, now, when stuff literally looks bad. Yes, please, please do. Don't harm your family. Um, but I should also let you know that you can freeze almost any food and foods kept uh, frozen are good from a safety perspective indefinitely. It's as long as you keep it frozen. Um, now the quality may degrade a little bit as you get dehydrated and stuff like that, which is why you want to um, over, like if you're going to take chicken, for example, and you're like, okay, well, I'm just going to stick it in the freezer. You got to overwrap it. Otherwise it will get dehydrated and you get freezer burn. So um, to keep your food quality good, always invest in extra bagging um, and bag your, your, your pro or your, your items very, very well when you put them in the freezer and they will last, you know, again, indefinitely. You, you could do this with ice cream because freezer burned ice cream is the worst. <laughs> It's so sad. <laughs> That's so awesome. And I, I did learn, I, I've, I've bought meat on sale for, like, I've had milk, bread in the freezer. I couldn't believe that could all go in the freezer. And I learned a lot of those tricks from other military spouses when we were in Germany. Um, yeah. Many of us were um, on the women, infants, and children. With yes. Overseas. So you get a ton of milk and a ton of bread. And when they said, you know, you can freeze it, I was like, 
what you know yeah come on kids drink more See, milk <laughs> yeah you can you can freeze yeah. milk um the the the, con the consistency changes a little bit it, i don't want it it's it's just a different it's a kind of i don't want to say grainy because that sounds gross but it's it's fine it's totally safe um when i was um stationed in adak alaska i had um uh, i was taking some evening classes i remember that the uh, the doctor and she's like I'm like, she goes, yeah, I just had this milk frozen. And so, but it's totally fine. And like, yeah, it, it tasted a little, now it's great for cooking. Right. So I highly recommend, so you can even break that up, right? So if you want to just make, make some milk ice cubes or what, <laughs> whatever, and then you can use that for cooking, totally fine, totally fine. Great idea. Well, you're given such creative and innovative ways to save. Do you have like one last tip that's just really wild or out there? Um, well, listen, um, yes, and, and this isn't wild or out there, and I kind of talked about this already, but you should be calling every service provider that you have, cell phones, utilities, everyone that gets your money on a monthly basis, and every three to four months, you call and negotiate. You call them by clockwork, you set a calendar item, my cell phone company hears from me every three to four months. And I'm always asking, what discounts do you have available? Hmm, we're considering moving over to a new provider because they're offering me something. You know, do you have anything that, that could help me stay and justify this? I'm just trying to save my family money. Okay, remember those words that I just shared with you and you just set a timer. And even if it means that you're gonna spend 20 minutes on hold and all that other stuff, hey, look, if you end up saving yourself $100 a month as a result of that call, was it worth it? Yeah, totally. And every service provider, I don't care who they are, they have discounts available. They and and use this phrase as well. Um, um, if you were me, like you know a lot more about the this than I do. If you were me, what discount would you ask for? Like, what would you say? Like, what are the magic words that 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 you would say if you were me? Right. And I've had people say you need to ask for our, you know, and then they tell me what it is or whatever. Always don't be afraid to ask for the military thing. And a lot of times you could, a lot of times, maybe if they don't have a military discount, they say, well, we actually don't have a military discount, but we do have a friends and family discount that I can give you. And just because you asked it, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's my, that's fair game. It's all, it's all yours, man. I hope we have saved a lot of folks, a lot of money today, Jackie. This has been a fun conversation. <laughs> Like this is, our, you know, they say time is money and like what a great way to spend your time right now, this one hour with us. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's been wonderful. Josh, you have just been exceptional. So to summarize, I would say what I heard you say is do some planning, spend the time, don't be afraid to ask, be nice, <laughs> and, and just really, really go for it. It sounds like that little investment of your time up front can save you hundreds, if not thousands. So I think it's been wonderful information. Thank you, Jackie. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you, everybody. This has been such an honor. And to those those who serve, those who sacrifice, thank you so much. The military, military families and middle spouses, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm so grateful, especially those that are, you know, still wearing the uniform, still overseas, still, you know, again, in, in the game, you know, as someone, again, who I, I invested my five years long ago, I just have so much appreciation for everybody that's, that's serving currently. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Well, wonderful. And to learn more about what Josh is doing, you can check out savingsangel.com. And Josh Elledge, thank you so much for being our guest today for our Midday Money Chat. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Jackie. I appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in. Bye-bye.